our teachings from any text, Michelle, it starts with the highest level of teaching. And then it goes down to the middle level. And then it comes down to the lower level. And then it teaches just, you know, as if, you know, like a fiction, okay, close your eyes, focus on mindfulness, focus on the breath, it will happen. Nothing happens. So now when we have understood the first part that it is the highest level of a teaching, then uh, we have to pay a little more attention and uh, we have to listen and learn it again and again and have to find out what are the challenges that we are facing. Hello, Charlie. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet everyone. everyone. Is... Hey, Charlie. What did you say, Charlie? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet. Ah, nice to meet you. I meet always beautiful uh, people, except me, which has a long beard. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see that in the journey, what we have undertaken, direct straight path, what exactly is mindfulness in the first four principles. And the next six or seven principles, we have understood what causes the mind impurity and, and distraction and how to, so what are those distractions? What causes me the sorrow and the suffering in my life? Charlie, keep a smile on the face. I always tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask everyone, yeah. So then, we understood what exactly is the practice. Uh, you have all the series, it is freely available on speakers. What exactly means by practice? After that, okay, after that, uh, we understood what exactly, uh, who is the seeker? Uh, that is what we are going. Now we are going to the last principle that how the seeker, who is the seeker? So we understood Shraddha, uh, the faith. Faith in what? Faith in yourself, not in anyone outside. We are not talking of religion, cult, dogma, belief, etc. etc. Shraddha means holding on to the innermost truth in your mind and where is the innermost truth it is your real nature and what is your real nature it is full of peace and happiness love and wisdom so the first quality is shraddha shraddha viryam second quality is enthusiasm commitment commitment to me no not at all commitment to yourself what is that commitment your commitment to bring about a total transformation in your life so that you keep smiling 24 by 7. You are in the state of happiness. You see that you forget and I remind you indirectly. <laughs> How you forget, we will understand that. Why you forget that. So, Shraddha Viryam. Uh, Shraddha Viryam, uh, Smriti, right memory. Right memory means what, you know, that we will undertake as a big challenge. But uh, to briefly tell you, what is this right memory? You know, sometimes we people feel, don't you feel, you know, sometimes you might have felt in your life, no, I'm totally frustrated, what should I do? You know, I have done everything right, but still I'm not able to uh, reach there. You know, at one point of life, you know, we we all feel that same way. So, but if I remember, recall the right memory, what is the right memory? I have practiced. I have a beautiful experience. So, if I have a beautiful experience today, I can achieve the same tomorrow also. What is the use of getting frustrated and living in anxiety? without any reason.
श्रद्धा वीरियम स्मृति समाधि फोर्थ क्वालिटी ऑफ ए सीकर इज रेगुलर प्रैक्टिस विद विजडम वट इज दैट विजडम दर आई मस्ट बी हंड्रेड परसेंट क्लियर बियॉन्ड बिलीफ कल्स डॉगमा रिलीजन दैट वट आई एम डूइंग आई मस्ट हैव ए राइट नॉलेज राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाई the intellect demands clarity and conviction why go on asking why because we are human beings how because we live at a higher level of self awareness as compared to animals i have already explained you last week people who live in lower level of self awareness they cannot achieve any state of mindfulness they may claim but they cannot attain according to the teachings make sure i am not teaching you anything it is all the knowledge i am passing on from the authentic text of huh, which has been validated for over 6000 years so for for what what for shraddha viryam huh, commitment right memory regular practice with wisdom and the fifth one is प्रज्ञा पूर्वक प्रज्ञा इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड प्रज्ञा प्रज्ञा टू सिलेबल्स इन संस्कृत हायर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड वट इज दैट हायर कॉन्शियसनेस दैट दैट मेक्स योर माइंड फ्री फ्रॉम अटैचमेंट क्रेविंग ऑफ सेशन हाउ इट हैपन्स द प्रोसेस इज डिसमेंट एंड डिसन so these are the five qualities then we understood that these five qualities have to if they are 100% you are the highest level of a seeker if it is 50% medium level of a seeker if it is 25% uh god will help you one day <laughs> so <laughs> so we bring in god uh, that we do not know now the last um, sutra in this that you don't have these five traits you don't live at the high, highest 100% of these five traits you have only 50% or 25% then what should we do so the master says ishwar pranidhana dwa sanskrit phrase it means you can achieve the highest level of meditation how by constant remembering the real self so we will understand what is the nature of the real self in the next five verses from next week but briefly tell you the real self is all knowledge it is pure consciousness it is all knowing awareness one second it is michelle has left ah she will join again because of internet connections here you know you you can take an excuse if you don't like my gossip you can simply say internet connection <laughs> was not there <laughs> <laughs> I know you're talking really... about me, but but <laughs> well, I'm not talking about you, Michelle. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no sooner than you said that, Archaria, that I had already exited out by trying to get more comfortable. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It is not that. I'm just <laughs> joking. you know we have an easy yes uh, me do you want to ask ask something so unmute first yes i, I do where is sophie where is sophie sophie promised me that she will be here exactly she's, by 7:30 she's rehearsing yeah. for a play oh yeah. that's right she's coming I just want to make for sure her, she's okay she'll be here for her it is not 7:30 yet So yes, thank you. <laughs> so, 
So you see that he says Ishwar Pranidhana Dwa. Now understand that import of this word. Uh, in a in a I would say possibly in a in a negative way, and then we will understand what exactly happens to the mind. I love you. Then what happens? Uh, what we say? Love at first sight. Very good. A uh, good word. Only good word. So love at first sight. That is attachment. Uh, then I return home. I'm taking. I'm taking tea, and my mind says, "Oh, I love him or her." Then I lie down on the back on the bed. I love. That love continues. You know, you see that craving, you can say infatuation, you can say obsession, that continues, isn't it? You know? For anything, to possess anything, you might not have experienced. <laughs> so <laughs> it happens. Now take that in a positive way. That mind is totally not obsessed, but possessed by an awareness of the real self 24 by 7. Think of this. Take another example. You are driving a car on the highway and you say, this car is very good. Again, you drive the second day, you find the same car, so you have a liking, then you have an attachment, then your mind starts thinking. Thinking is with emotion. Oh, I have lost. I will buy it. Huh? Let me arrange the money, and ultimately you buy it. You see that? What is happening in the mind? A kind of attachment and infatuation. So now turn this infatuation and attachment to the real self. It will not be an infatuation. You are always constantly aware that peace is my essential nature. Come what may. Happiness is within me. That real self is all-knowing. When we, you have that level of awareness, 24 by 7, you don't need those five traits. You only need that constant remembrance and awareness of the real self. Huh? So what will happen every time you, even there is a crazy teacher who is giving you a meditation practice, you will succeed. And if you don't have that, even when the Buddha comes to you, you will not succeed. Are you getting it? So the teachers of the Eastern wisdom are only pointers. What are the they point? They point to the knowledge, they point to the understanding, and they say, okay. Be very clear, have a clarity, what we are seeking, how we are seeking, and then you follow the practice, you reach to that state. So you see that? Master says, after explaining all the different traits that we need to become the highest level of a seeker, here he says you need only one thing. Do you ever forget your house? Do you ever forget your honey? Do you ever forget that you are single or married? <laughs> How can you forget? How dare your mind forget your true nature? That is the goal of meditation. And where the real nature, pure consciousness, your true nature is located, it is deep inside the heart, behind the body and the mind. So that's why I made a statement, how dare you forget your real nature, which is already located inside. You already have it. But why we forget? Because mind is moving outside. But why the mind is moving outside? Why the mind is distracted? The mind is distracted in moving out because it is projecting happiness in people, in things, in wealth, in in, in honey, etc., etc. 
projecting happiness. Happiness is not there. Peace is not there. But I am projecting happiness. So what happens by the projection? What happens by projection? Projection means what? Simple definition of a projection. What appears true is not true. My image is projected in the mirror. So I'm not true in the mirror. So I project happiness. Keep a smile on the face. I will mind you all the time. <laughs> Understand it. If you have any question, then you can ask me. Are you getting it? So projection of the happiness outside makes me forget my real nature. The goal of meditation is to awaken to that real nature. What is that real nature or real self? It is of the nature of pure consciousness, truth, wisdom, love, permanent happiness. Did you get something when I said, when I gave an example of creating an attachment on session, the mind is totally possessed by an object or a person or a thing in the world outside. The same kind of mind is possessed by, either by thinking, either by loving, huh? either by knowledge of the real self, 24 by 7, you will succeed in and will reach to the highest state of meditation in three days. One master says, you need only three days. Three days, John, 24 by 7, constant remembrance. You are aware of it. Finished. Next week, you will say, thank you, beard guy. I have achieved that. <laughs> but now I am simply enjoying listening to you. <laughs> I want to, I want you all to make that statement next week. <laughs> so why is that? That the teaching in the first chapter is for the highest level of a seeker. That very process, that very method has a special name. And that name is Bhakti. Bhakti. Uh, what I have just explained. So understand the import of this meaning in Sanskrit. Bhakti means division. So, oh, division. Division for what? Your mind has clearly separated, divided what is not desired from what is desired. Huh? What is not desired? Same thing, mind is projecting happiness outside. You instantly remember and bring the mind back. I don't need. Happiness is within me. Are you getting it? You see the logic and the reasoning they put, our masters put, bhakti. Bhakti, that is one meaning of the bhakti. Hello, no problem. <laughs> we are waiting for you. So Mead was asking you, where is Sophie? I said, she will definitely come. Not because of liking of a beer guy, but because of the principles. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that see the clarity in our journey of the eastern wisdom they are 100% logical they want you to understand and get the right knowledge so one meaning of the bhakti is now how do you get that <clears throat> so one, one aspect I have already explained the second aspect is <clears throat> there is another way <coughs> did, I, did you understand the meaning of the projection? The mind is projecting happiness where it is not. 
right? So my mind is projecting a fake happiness in the object, in the people, in the things outside, right? That is what the projection is. Huh? You stand before the mirror and you put a paste into the brush and you don't brushing, you don't start brushing the teeth in the mirror. You brush your own teeth. <laughs> so if you start brushing the teeth in the mirror, that is projection. Right? Now look at the deeper insight of uh, the, the masters. Take the same example. Now you say that this, you know, you take any image. So normally I took the image of my master. My master is located inside my heart. He is always present uh, all around me. So that is why I have to remove it. So we have 330 million gods and goddesses. Make a choice and start offering yourself, self-offering and self-giving, as if you are in intense love with that god and goddesses. We use the word god as a means to attain awakening. Remember this. We are not using the god as a means of religion, cult, dogma, belief. And uh, it has, I would say, more than, I would say, 100 means. John will be happy. What I'm going to say now. So there is another process. There is another process uh, which says Pati Parmeshwar. So Pati means the husband. Parmeshwar means God. Don't take it otherwise. First understand it. It is the reverse also. So first I'm explaining. So what happens when you meet your honey, you consider not as a physical being, but it is a representation of the real self and the higher consciousness. So you love that higher consciousness present in the husband or wife. So what happens? to bring about a change in your mindset. That is another way. I can go on explaining hundreds of ways. If you don't like it, stop listening. Wait for the next statement. <laughs> so these are the different processes, whether you follow it or not. <laughs> Michelle is thinking, I'm not going to do like this. This is crazy. So this is what? is known as bhakti. So this bhakti means first division, dividing, separating. The delusion, the projection, and the perversion created in the mind due to infatuation, attachment, duality, and a conflict. The moment you drop the duality and a conflict in your mind with an understanding, the mind is calm. The mind was becoming agitated and angry over that issue. Now, after understanding, it is not. Mind is calm. Do whatever you want to do. What you are doing, it's your business. Why should I be worried if you don't follow the right understanding? So mind loosens the knots of bondage. That causes the anxiety, that causes the hesitation. Now the mind is pure and it can absorb into meditation easily. So he uses, that is the beautiful. Now you see that there is another master and then we'll make your understanding, then we will do the practice. The nature of this bhakti is adoration worship, self-offering to what is greater than oneself. What it means? I feel I'm great. What it means? Oh, ego. I'm more handsome than John. Ego. I cannot say I'm more beautiful than I'm already seeing the beautiful women. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see that? So, what is that? Understand. The nature of the bhakti is adoration, worship, self-offering to what is greater than oneself. 
what is greater than my ego what is greater than my ego huh? the nature of love is a feeling or seeking for closeness and union with the real self did you get it this nature of the love that you you mentally you see that real self is already presented present within me behind the mind and i am in love with that the when you are love with people outside object outside they are going to make you crazy make sure if it is not tell me <laughs> so no understand the fact <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting it? Because why? Because I'm seeking love in others when the love is within me. That is also a projection. So you see that beauty of expression, the nature of love is a feeling or seeking of closeness and oneness with that real self in the mind. Self-giving is the character of both. Bhakti and the love. What we understand that the love is a power of consciousness in the being. It is not the power of ego. Ego says, I love you and you hate me. Now the time has come to say goodbye. What kind of a love that you have in your life? That is not love. <laughs> You, are you getting it? Understand that, you know, when we become aware in the mind, then we understand bhakti and love. Huh? So that is what? We know the love between human beings. Clear? In all its forms. The love of parents for children. Huh? of brothers and sisters or siblings, of friends and lovers. And then we love what we say in the name of honey. So I have always been saying it. First dating, then soulmate. And after a few minutes, soulmate, then compromise. If no compromise, saying goodbye. So what is the main element here? I am happy to be with you. Now I am happy separating from you. You are the same guy. So what happened? Something is wrong in the mind. So the master says clearly, all these kinds of love are tainted with ignorance. You are not wrong. Your honey is not wrong. It is because of ignorance I am attached. That attachment is not love. All these so-called attachment is tainted with ignorance, selfishness, and other defects. That is the drawback in this love. Now reverse this. I love. Love is within me. What happens? Mind drops all the things where it is running in people, in objects. And the moment the mind moves within, the moment the mind moves within in awareness and attention, you start meditation. Three words, moving within, living within, awakening within. All these explanations summarized as moving within, living within. Now you awaken to the love inside. Allow that love to be expressed outside. So even if your honey is angry, it is not impacting you. You still have the same love, same peace. Come what may, now your mind cannot be changed cannot be made hesitated and angry. 
that is the goal of meditation no i don't want that kind of a love you know <clears throat> i had one beautiful woman in new jersey she is wonderful so i'm not telling you the name but i did i tell you that she spent about $15000 on her facial surgery secretly i knew her age around 70 and she complained to me that she did not have money to pay her mortgage it's a fact it's a truth see what happens in our life so what is this kind of a love and then we will start the practice one must learn how to love better to love with devotion with self-giving and not against the love itself but against it distorted form we have to drop it we have to drop all kinds of monopolizing what monopolizing of attachment, possessiveness, jealousy, and all the feelings which accompany these movements. Once you do it, the mind is totally free. <clears throat> then what will happen to that mind? That the mind is constantly looking inside, living within. Last one, and then we will do the practice. Ego lives on three things what I am, what I have, what I possess. Drop all the three. You are always in love. Nobody can hijack your love. It is not love for someone. It is the love within manifest. Think of it. What I am. I am a beer guy. John should respect me. You see that? What I am. <laughs> not as an example <laughs> you see that what I am I have not given you the session to respect me mind is clear mind is clear now so like this you have lot of considerations that we have built living in a particular society in a culture huh, with a particular habit what I am. Understood that? You don't appreciate what I am. So, I have reasons to <laughs> drop that anger and hesitate. What I have. What I have. Look at my body. I'm so handsome. I'm so beautiful. What I have. I'm intelligent than you. And long list. Uh, you already know it. We use that. Michelle, we normally get upset because you don't recognize what I have. So if I keep in my mind what I have, ego is there and that ego is hurt. And then I... And the last thing is what I possess what I possess. Okay, if he has this big refrigerator, but we have a beautiful refrigerator. <laughs> what I have. What I possess. No, third one. What I possess. What I possess. You drop all the three from you, even the thought process. If the thought process uh, stops for 24 by 7, your mind is light. Your mind is totally free. You need not to think of anything else. Then even a simple meditation practice will help you to go deeper. So we have understood what we have understood. That, that is what we say God is pure consciousness. And then we will understand that what exactly is the characteristics and the attributes of the real self next week. And once we have a clarity of understanding why those attributes belong to the real self, which is already within us, and the discovery of that real self is, is 
meditation, awakening to that nature is meditation, 